Christopher to uh, uh, comment uh, and try and keep it to uh, around five minutes, then I'll, I'll turn to Fiona Bryant. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Stephen, and thanks everybody for inviting us this evening. And so we spoke to um, many of the community back in December um, when we'd um, published our phase two consultation summary report that sort of highlighted some of our key decisions and um, also highlighted the conclusions of the feedback from our consultation um, to report, which you know we had a great feedback, and so um, thank everybody for that. <clears throat> excuse me, since December, we've been planning our phase three consultation, which we're planning to launch at the end of February. We'll know, um, come the end of this week, we'll know our exact date and we will make sure that um, councillors, parish councils, etc., are aware of that actual date of launch as soon as we've um, nailed it down ourselves. So this will be our third and final consultation ahead of submission um, to the planning inspectorate um, as part of the development consent or order. And obviously, once that um, consent has been, that, that DCS submission has been accepted, we'll then go into the um, six month examination protest, um, process, sorry, where obviously interested parties are invited to provide further details on the views and, and you know, and, and address some of the issues that obviously you've raised um, in the Q&A um, today. Um, so really our third consultation, he's sort of looking at three sort of um, aspects of the um, consultation. It's looking at um, releasing some further detail on the updated design. So we've been sort of doing a lot more um, detailed work since consultation two. Um, working with our um, architects, but also um, working with our technical stakeholders and our community stakeholders to um, sort of develop the designs further. So at, the, at this um, stage, we go with more detailed design, particularly around the, um, the space around the site that we're looking to create new habitat and new recreational facilities. Um, we'll also be updating on the plant design as well. Um, and then a key part of the um, consultation is looking at our mitigation measures, um, as well as our preliminary environmental impact report. And that'll be the report that um, goes before we um, go ahead and complete a full environmental statement. So that will cover all of the key issues that have been brought forward in the last two consultations around odour, landscape, um, transport, etc. So there'll be a lot more detail, there'll be quite a lot of documents to, to take a look at um, to, to sort of um, ask and, and for some feedback from um, stakeholders. We'll be using the same processes as we used in the last two consultations. So we'll be going to our core consultation zone, which is um, slightly extended now and is sort of over 10,000 properties will receive our um, consultation leaflet, um, feedback form and free post envelope. Our free to use communication lines will be open. Obviously the, the consultation isn't limited to the core consultation zone. So any anyone is free to comment on the, 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 the project and the consultation. Um, hard copy materials will be available our um, usual community access points. Um, we will be doing our community um, webinars. Um, digital was successful um, last time. Um, obviously, COVID was a was a key issue, but um, it was a benefit. But that's not going to exclude face to face. So we're currently um, working with the parish council at the moment to nail down some dates so that we can come come out and do some face to face events with people because obviously um, that was limited last time as to how much we could get out in the community and come and speak to people. So we look forward to pu publicising those dates in the, the coming weeks. Um, so really that, that, you know, just to give you a bit of a heads up, it's on its way out and, um, you know, really look forward to um, sort of speaking to people and, and, and engaging um, on our updated designs in the, the coming, um, the coming uh, month, weeks and months. And that consultation will be an eight week period. So end of Feb, we'll be looking into April when it closes. But as I say, we'll get those exact dates out to you as soon as we're able to. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Um, uh, Ryan, if you can um, stop sharing, thank you very much. Uh, and um, I'll now turn to um, Fiona Bryant from uh, Strategic Director for Cambridge City Council for uh, an update on the City Council's. Uh, project. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Stephen, and good evening, all. Um, Ryan, could you possibly put up? Ah, perfect timing. Thanks. Um, it's just a really quick, um, hopefully, a cu couple of minutes really on this. Um, <clears throat> I know there have been some questions about what is actually going to happen um, should, uh, you know, in terms of the future development of the core site, 
um, which is obviously predicated on, on the AAP and the uh, DCO process. Um, but we're right at the beginning of that. We've already started engaging with a number um, of organizations across the city and uh, some of you who are here tonight will have already been involved. But we're planning an early uh, launch, um, the end of February, beginning of March. Uh, it would have been ideal had we been able to do that face to face, but in the circumstances, much of it is still gonna be online. This particular set of events are based on um, sharing the vision, the promises and values, and those are very much in line with both uh, the councils and uh, with, with the AAP vision, um, the councils, uh, both South Cams and cities visions, um, particularly around climate change and also Anglian Waters vision in targeting net zero carbon um, by 2030. Um, so uh, the, the promises are around the people, the city and the planet, and the values that we have developed for the core site are around um, shaping it by many engaging uh, as many as possible in the shape of that development as it comes forward, um, making sure that it's rooted in the city, uh, making sure that we focus on the ability for the community who live, work and learn there and play um, to, to um, embrace street life, community life, that it's open to all, very much integrated with the surrounding areas. Um, and that very much it's focused on nature and living within environmental limits. Um, these events will start at the beginning of uh, February. Um, we are in the process of, of sending out leaflets to over 18,000 households and businesses in North Cambridge, um, including free postcards that will, will invite feedback from, from everyone who, who chooses to use them on a five minute neighborhood and the sorts of things that you would value within that area. Um, we will also be running roadshows in key locations, um, for example, uh, Cambridge North Station, that's based, based on pop-ups, um, and those will be face-to-face. -face. And if you want any more information, please do go to the website, which is www.coresitecambridge, or one word, .co.uk, and we will make sure that that's sent out with the Q&A as well. You can register there for updates and the news of events. The webinars you will need to register on the website for, and the, the four of those that are planned are given on this slide. Um, we're also starting the search or have started the search for a name for the core site. Um, and on the basis of wanting to in, embrace the, the, the views of people uh, in the area, we've been working with students for, on the marketing um, courses from Cambridge Regional Academy. Hopefully some of those may be the future residents um, for the site, uh, should it be able to come forward and um, effectively been looking for names and searching for names over the last couple of months um, and now beginning to consider all of those suggestions and, um, and uh, suggest a, a possible shortlist. Um, we're also working very much on, on community engagement in the site um, and looking and, and part of the sort of uh, launch information will include how we're going to start activating that site through some meanwhile uses, including around sustainable food, sustainable construction and bring those forward. Um, and then we're working with a company called Sortition um, to launch an ideas exchange. And this will be a long term relationship with a group of people to help us um, really get to the nitty gritty of the the uh, needs and develop that designer over, over the next couple of years. Just uh, on the program broadly, we're expecting three um, periods of consultation. This is a very early launch one based on the vision and values, as I say. There will be a further one in September um, where we'll start bringing forward ideas around a sort of concept design and then a further one uh, in 2023, which will be obviously developing on that with the expectation um, or the hope that we may be able to submit a planning application to the local planning authority in 2024. I think that's it from me, thank you.